somewhere over the rainbow. Bluebirds fly, and the dreams that you dare to, oh why, oh why can't I? I will I see trees of green and red roses too? I'll watch them bloom for me. And for you, and I'll think to myself, what a wonderful world. Somewhere over the rainbow, bluebirds fly. Birds fly over the rainbow. Why, oh why can't I? Dorothy, in The Wizard of Oz, wanted to escape from her life. And so that song, Over the Rainbow, is a yearning for something better. When I researched this, I found something I hadn't known. The song was written in 1939 by Isidore, I'm going to, these words, these names, Hochberg and Hyman Arlock, and they were sons of Jewish immigrants in New York City. And when they wrote this song, they had to reach deep into the suffering of their Jewish, Jewish heritage to a time when the Jews of Europe could not fly, could not escape beyond the rainbow. Interesting, isn't it? So, have you ever wished you could escape your life? Have been those times? Over the rainbow speaks to our heart and soul, doesn't it? It's a promise of new beginnings. And most of us know Genesis 9, 12, when God says, This is the sign of the covenant I am making between me and you and every living creature. My rainbow in the clouds will be the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all life. In the Bible, the rainbow is a symbol of hope. It's about cleansing. It's about a promise of new life. It's what we want when we're in those, when we're in those, those times of our life, isn't it? When there seems to be no way out. When I was a child, you didn't see very many rainbows where I lived. There was woods all around us, not a lot of sky. So when we did see one, it was exciting. And for me, it really lifted me up. I lived on a, a little farm in the country, it was in a little town, and it was about hard work and fun. Imagination it was a waste of time. So I would imagine being over that rainbow and leprechauns and pots of gold someplace else other than where I was. I felt that if I could fly away, if I could leave this life I was born into. Imagination became the power within me that helped me move beyond the limitations, the expectations of the family, of the culture that I was born into. And it's why I'm here today where I am. The power of imagination is our vision beyond appearances. Dan, you have the definition for us there? Imagination gives shape, form, and color to unformed mental energy. What does that mean? We have the class that meets on Tuesday mornings and we go over these powers in detail. And one of the things it said in the book we're working with, that mental and spiritual energy are one and the same. Mental and spiritual energy are one and the same. It takes a while for that to sink into the brain. The class went, oh, this is deep. <laughs> 
But this energy, this energy in us is always seeking an awareness. It's always seeking a direction. You feel it sometimes in you. It feels like there's something stirring in there, moving, and, and it doesn't know where to go, or I don't know what to do with it. When we can tap into that, when we can make that energy in there our focus, instead of all the noise and din out here, you might say when we can make God our focus, then we use it to create the life we want. We use it to create our reality. We use it to empower us instead of to limit us. You see, our imagination can be used in, in, in two ways, right? I can imagine wonderful things, but what's fear? What am I imagining when I'm in fear? It's my imagination also. So I can use it to empower myself, or I can use it to limit myself. So as an adult, what do we get told? We're directed away from using our imagination, aren't we? It's only for children. Fantasy, it hasn't any place in the, in the what, the real world. A lot of people are making a lot of money now because of their imagination, right? Jesus, in Matthew 18.3, said, Unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Jesus is saying, if I want to live in a heavenly consciousness, if I want to live in a closer relationship with God, I need to become like a little child. I need to drop my self-limiting beliefs. Let go of the rules that say, I'm supposed to do this, I'm supposed to act like this because I'm this age. I love it, right? None of you do that. Not, not in here. Children live in a world where all things are possible. And locked inside of each of us, one, two, three, is that child. Not locked up. You know, Albert Einstein said this about imagination. Imagination is more important than knowledge. For knowledge is limited to all we know now, while imagination embraces the entire world and all there ever will be to know and understand. So stop treating your imagination like it has nothing to do with reality, because it has everything to do with your reality. We have the power to imagine the life we want, or I can imagine the limits and fears. It's within me. If I have a good day, it starts in my imagination. It starts what I'm imagining at the beginning of the day, right? And if I have a bad day, where does that start? It starts in my imagination. All of our experiences have the starting point in imagination. Think of imagination like software that programs our behavior, our actions, our expectations. We got a computer person over here. She teaches it. She's going like this. So what I see in my mind's eye, you know, when you imagine it, you see it there, don't you? What I see in my mind's eye, whether it's good or bad, becomes my reality. If I imagine it sooner or later, it's going to show up in my life. So think about your life right now and what your imagination has been creating. To manifest, to appear out here, Imagination, my imagination requires action. We say that we have to put feet to our faith. We have to put feet to our imagination. Have you ever sat around talking with a friend or a group of people, coming up with some great ideas about 
things that haven't been made yet or things that haven't been done yet, you feel real smart when you do that. But then you just go on your way and nothing happens, right? You don't do anything. And all of a sudden, one day, what you and your friends were talking about, there it is. And you go, hey, that was my idea. Ever have that happen? People who have acted on their imagination, who put feet to it, have brought amazing new things into our world. Stephen Jobs was the pioneer of the microcomputer revolution. He took things that already existed and he imagined new uses for them. Walt Disney, of course, we live in Florida, was once fired by his newspaper editor because he wasn't creative enough. And he went on to imagine an entirely new way of ways to entertain our world, didn't he? <laughs> Good thing he was fired. Theodore Giselle, Dr. Seuss, the cat in the hat, the green eggs and ham, how the Grinch stole Christmas. His first book was rejected by 27 publishers. And as a child, he grew up in his family's business. His family was German heritage, and their business was a brewery. But he grew up in that brewery imagining a different life. And then there's J.K. Rollins, author of the best-selling book series in history. She lost her job as a secretary because she spent too much time daydreaming. <laughs> she was rejected by 12 publishing houses, but her imagination took her over the rainbow, and she went from a single mom living in near poverty to a billionaire today. She quoted this at a um, graduation exercise. Many prefer not to exercise their imaginations. They choose to remain comfortably within the bounds of their own experience, never troubling to wonder how it would feel to have been born other than they are. Think of yourself as I'm reading this. We do not need magic to change the world. We carry all the power we need inside ourselves already. We have the power to imagine better. How many of you just loved Harry Potter? I, I just absorbed it. Miracles happen. We fly over the rainbow when we give up seeking to be fulfilled by or having to live up to the expectations of other people and things in the outer world. It was said about Jim Henson, who created the Muppets. I loved this. Everything he wanted to do was impossible. Everything he did had never been done before. We can all be Jim Hendersons. Charles Fillmore, who's the co-founder of Unity, this is a prosperity book, wrote this. God's first currency is ideas. When we talk about prosperity and unity, we're not talking about money. There's nothing wrong with money. But we're talking about our prosperous thoughts. So long as you depend on money alone, you are worshiping a false god. You must first enter into the understanding that God is source and you can draw on this source without limit. Because money always has its limit. I remember a friend of mine who did quite well and was bragging about a pair of cowboy boots he bought that were, I don't know, several hundred dollars. And the next day I saw an article in the paper about this man making cowboy boots that were thousands of dollars. You can never, when you're comparing with money, you're never going to have the most or the best. Because there's always something out there bigger. That's not our source. So my question to you this morning, what would you really love to be doing with your life right now? What would you really love to be doing with your life right now? Or what would you like to be feeling in your life right now? How would you like to be feeling every day? Not necessarily about having or getting, but, but how would you like to be being every day? 
Is there something you would like to be or do that you believe you can't? And are you willing to reconsider that belief? Because you can. Any thoughts you have that are telling you you can't, reconsider them. Are you willing to stop doubting? Are you willing to stop questioning? Are you willing to stop trying to shrink your life to fit your old beliefs, your old limitations? Are you willing to imagine what it would feel like to fly over the rainbow? I stand here today because of the power of my imagination. It was a driving force in my life. It was stronger than my fears, and there were a lot of them. It was stronger than my need of approval for others, even in ministerial school. In Greek mythology, the rainbow is seen as a stairway between earth and heaven. So starting today, I'm inviting you to believe in your imagination, to put feet to it, and to start climbing that stairway that will take you over the rainbow from earth to heaven. God bless you.